Hi everyone, welcome to the Sip and Spin. I am the Tipsy Spinster and in my glass is Stella Artois Solstice. It's this season's lager, it's limited edition, and I chose to feature it today because it's the perfect summer sipping beverage. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the Stella Artois Buy a Lady a Drink program. It was started back in 2015 and it's kind of a neat program. Every year, between one and three participating countries create a limited edition glass. And when you purchase this chalice or glass, you're essentially providing five years of clean drinking water for a village in one of the participating countries. It's kind of a neat idea. It's a cool program. I love the glasses and I'm really enjoying this season's solstice lager. This season, we've looked at the idea of from fleece to fabric, and we started with a Jacob fleece from Meridian Jacobs. We sorted it. We went through the whole process of scouring it, um, washing it, combing it, carding it, spinning it up. I have the three skeins of yarn that I spun from quartz. This is quartz, and I ended up with a total of 622 yards. Because I got quartz from Meridian Jacobs, I also wanted to honor the owner of that farm, Robin Lynn. And Robin has an article in the current issue of Little Looms. And one of the things I realized is during this season, I've also been showcasing publications or books. Um, Easy Weaving with Little Looms is a wonderful publication because it talks about quick and simple projects that you can do on rigid heddle looms and other small tapestry looms, looms that are relatively inexpensive to purchase. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that and then talk about the project. And this was the project that I had envisioned from the very beginning. And the project that I'm going to be focusing on is the Green Pastures Scarf, which is a class warped scarf. And it's really kind of neat with the textures and the variations in there. And so because this is something that is, it's a new process to me, I kind of want to talk just a little bit about sampling or swatching and the benefits of that. When you create yarn for a specific project, or if you're just creating yarn, as I've mentioned before, I'm a process person, not a product person. So when it comes to actually conceptualizing a final product, I have to think a lot harder about it because most of the time I just grab fiber and I spin and then I hope for the best. This was the first year where I really had to think about spinning yarn for a specific project. And in tandem with what I was doing for this show, I was also participating in this year's Tour de Fleece. Heavenly of Heavenly Nitchet created a wonderful team this year. And while keeping us all challenged with different spinning techniques, she also encouraged us to look at one particular breed and to see what that breed could do. So our breed focus was Rambouillet, which is a fiber that I had never spun before. So I did sort of a mini fleece to fabric project with that Rambouillet, and this is the scarf that I created. So the fiber is all Rambouillet. It's dyed with Kool-Aid, and if you want information on how to dye with Kool-Aid, hop on over to my Instagram, which is where I also showcased this year's Tour de Fleece. This is a clasp warp scarf, and this is my swatch. This is my sample. And then I threw in a couple other samples as well. This is an art yarn that I sampled using an open knit technique, and this is Shetland that I spun last year and I knew that I wanted to do a lace 
pattern with it. And so there's the swatch for that. The really nice thing with sampling and swatching, it gives you an idea of what the yarn will do in a particular pattern as well as how it will wash up. Now for me, for this one, I needed to learn this technique and I didn't want to learn this technique using my limited amount of fiber because if I made a mistake, that was it. There's no going back. So I used my sample loom and I wanted to talk a little bit about sample looms as well. It's kind of a funny story about this one. My sample loom was made by Handy Woman in Texas. And Janet put this together right as Kromsky was coming out with their Presto looms. I contacted Janet and I said, I need a small travel loom that has an incredibly low profile. There are some great small rigid huddle looms out there. Schacht makes the Cricut, which is a brilliant entry level loom. Ashford makes the sample it in two sizes. Kromsky makes the Presto and I believe the Presto now also comes in two sizes as well and the Presto folds down completely flat and I found it funny because just as the Presto was coming out I got this one. I had this one made for me. I love the footprint that this one has because it is actually smaller than the Presto and that's what I wanted. I wanted a small sample loom that I could put into a tote and take it with me wherever I went. Now, this isn't good for big projects. Realistically, the length of my table here, that's as much warp as this project or this loom can handle. However, for learning a new technique and practicing a new technique, sample looms are great and as you can see, I have a scarf and it's long enough. I can certainly wear it. So I've got some good length on this one as well. So as I was thinking about this show, I was like, ooh, do I just want to do the project on my little loom or do I want to break out my slightly bigger rigid huddle loom and do it on that one. And I think I am going to go just a little bit wider and I am going to use my larger Ashford size loom. So if you'll give me just a second when I come back, I am going to talk about creating a clasp warp weaving project. And that's what my fabric is going to be for this season's final least to fabric creation. All right, so I cleaned up my workspace and I set up two tables because I'm going to be direct warping. For a new weaver, direct warping is great because I'm warping right on to my loom. And for this one, I switched from my sample loom, which only gives me a six inch weaving width to my Ashford 16 inch. So I've got 16 inches of weaving width for this one. Now the pattern calls for eight inches. So ugh, I need to do some math, which I've already done. And I know that I need to come in seven on each side in order to get the weaving width that I want. So to get started, I am going to take my primary yarn, which is A, and I'm going to tie it onto the back. I mean, roughly somewhere in the vicinity of that seventh slot. And I want a little bit of a floating salvage. So I'm going to start with a slot and not a hole. And I am going to bring my yarn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. through. Now I have a choice. In traditional direct warping, what I'm doing is I'm pulling through and I've got two strands of yarn in the slot. Traditionally, what we would then do is when we get ready to tie on, we're going to split this and we would put one strand through a hole, one strand through 
the slot. I'm using a five dent reed on this, which is uh, five per inch. And the reason for that is I'm going to have two strands of yarn in each slot and each hole because the clasp, that's what's going to create that, that dual piece. So I'm gonna have two strands of yarn in each slot and in each hole. And I'm gonna take yarn B and I'm gonna attach it all the way down at the warping peg down there. Now, this is where if you are a planner, there are a lot of ways to plan clasp warp. And one way to do it is to diagram everything out. You could do a full size scale model or you could just kind of wing it and hope for the best. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm gonna wing it and hope for the best. So I'm going to start with this. And because I don't want a lot of white in this, I'm gonna come with a fairly heavy dark gray to start with. And I'm gonna move from the grays to the blacks and then sort of move around from there. You know, come to think of it, I think I'm gonna do a couple whites to start out with. So this is where the planning process comes into play, sorry. I'm gonna do a couple whites first. Just to sort of get things in perspective. Make sure I don't miss anything. And because I'm working with wool, I want to keep it kind of loose, kind of, I mean, not super tight, but not super loose either. All right, so I've got a couple started. One, two, I'm gonna go three, and then I'll start doing the class. Okay, so I'm gonna put my first clasp right here. So I'm gonna take B through, and so it essentially creates two colors right here. So now I have this going through, which is what I am looking for. There we go. And so now this one is going to have to come around here and wait for my next white strand to come through. And now I'm noticing that this is getting darker and I guess that's exactly what I was looking for is that light to dark play. So I know that I'm gonna wanna switch to my dark at some point. And so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just cut it or wrap it. I don't even need to cut it really. I can just wrap it a couple times around and start this one. like so. And I will continue doing this until I get all the way across.
warped, which I realized once I... <laughs> I even have something right here that just says, just breathe, to remind me that when I do stupid things like this, I need to just breathe. Because what I realized I had done is I completely warped this backwards, which was, it turned out fine, because when I tied on to the back beam and realized that I had zero weaving width and what I had done, this loom is set up so it was very easy just to switch everything to the back side. And now I am fully able to get started on actually weaving this project. And you know what? It actually, a uh, couple things. Don't warp a loom when you're drinking because you make mistakes like I just did. Here's the other thing, though. What I realized is I wasn't sure how I was going to use the warp. And this way, actually doing it backwards, I can start out with the white. And if I run out of the white as I start to hit my colors, that's where I can do a technique called clasp weft. So my warp is done. And what I can start doing is I can start clasping my weft as I go through to get some of those more solid colors. That was one of the things that I realized when I did my sample. I did all of it in white, and I felt like some of my rainbow colors were muted as I went through and really looked at it. And I haven't washed this yet, so it doesn't have a lot of drape. It's still pretty stiff. It'll loosen up when I wash it. But some of my colors were muted. So even though I warped this backwards, it actually might turn out to be beneficial in the end. So here we go. I will do a final recap once I weave this. It is going to take me a couple hours to weave this, and I'm not going to do that in hyperlapse. So check my Instagram page. I'm sure I'll have a couple quick videos as I move through this project over on Instagram. And then I will come back and do a final, final recap. So this actually isn't my last show. I'll probably do one more quick one that just kind of recaps this entire season because there was a lot of information in the shows from the choosing your fleece to getting all the way up to this point. So thanks for tuning in. As always, just a reminder, just breathe and happy spinning. Thank <laughs> you.